are testing out hey, the mittens. What's up, buddy? This is mittens. That's the neighborhood cool cat. I'm not a cat person, but that's a cool cat. We are testing out the Cam Park X40 action camera, and um, hopefully you guys can see this okay. And um, appears to be a pretty decent action camera. Now I'm going through the settings now, so this is the initial setup that we're using. We're going to be using this to vlog on the motorcycle channel, but this might also come in helpful for Fulton Street Beats. But we're going to have a discussion about Fulton Street Beats today. Um, hopefully, you guys will take a walk with me. And we can discuss this stuff. We have um, we have a lot of misinformation going on on the forums about Kathy Zong and myself. Um, when I started reviewing Kathy Zong's guitars, everybody thought that, uh, well, somehow how I was involved in sales of the guitars. I'm not. I'm just a reviewer. And I do review a lot of guitars from her. And I choose to review a lot of guitars from her, well, because they're good guitars, for the most part. And you all know that, um, you all know that Recently we had a bad one, but it can happen with the best of them, right? I've had a slew of bad Gibsons. Um, a bad Fender. It happens. But Kathy Zong's quality seems to be, well, more consistent than most. And I'm talking even your name brand guitars. So keep that in mind. I plan on reviewing a lot more of her guitars. Now, there's a lot of misconceptions, there's a lot of lies out there, and people just run their mouth basically and don't know what the hell they're talking about. They make assumptions, they put on their tinfoil hats, and they run with it. Kathy Zong is a woman, I assure you that. How do you know? Well, I spoke to her on the phone today, as a matter of fact. Um, we message quite frequently, and I've actually seen pictures of her. <laughs> Kathy wanted me to make it very clear to everybody that she likes hands-on when it comes to the guitar. She wants, she wants to personally take your guitar, package it, and send it to you. That takes a lot of time. And there's a lot of you. So be patient. What you expect from this one woman is far more than you would expect from any other big manufacturer over here in the U.S., correct? So, cut her some slack. Now, on the custom orders, a lot of people said it's my fault that she doesn't do custom orders anymore. Well, I could be farthest from the truth. My guitar review had no basis in her decision to not do the custom orders. But I think you guys are, well, misinformed on what she means by custom orders. What she means is she doesn't want to take these one-off guitars that thousands of people are contacting her about and saying, I want this built, I want this built, I want this built, trying to imitate every single brand and every possible configuration with every different graphic design that there could be on the guitar. It turns out to be an impossibility in the end. And you can't do it. You can't. You can't do it. You can't keep up. It's just the logistics of it. Hell, most of you guys can't tie your shoes in the morning. Let alone run a business selling multiple different style guitars in styles of brands across the board from all over the world. Getting them shipped out, getting them built, the logistics of them right, making sure the color's perfect, the setup's perfect, everything. And then listening to customers bitch after they get them. That's not feasible. It's not, it's not sustainable. And surely the intelligent of you out there can understand that. Now, Kathy assured me that business-wise, she very much likes building guitars and she likes to oversee the build of those guitars. And what she's doing currently, and this may change, it's set in stone. Everything may change. But currently, she is going to be doing builds that she can sell multiple guitars. And I'm going to be the first one to tell you 
that I asked Kathy to build some guitars that don't have trademarks. Why? But I have a channel that reviews all guitars. Yes, this is why I asked her. I said, Kathy, the logistics of it are, a lot of people don't want trademarks. They want a quality guitar at a reasonable price and they really don't care what logo's on the headstock. So why don't you build some guitars without trades where people don't have to worry about customs and the guitars come in and they're happy. She doesn't have to worry about customs. She doesn't have to worry about fulfilling orders twice or losing money. So signature guitars with something different, such as a name, a first name, or a last name, or whatever on it that's untrademarked, there's no patents or copyrights on certain things. If she does this, it's going to take a lot of risk. Out of the world of Chinese guitars, right? Makes sense. Now I realize there's some gray areas, and I'm not in business with Gabby. I don't. This is not a business. I review guitars. Suggestions are not a business. I don't operate in the world of commerce. I don't operate in the world of uniform commercial code. I operate in constitutional law of the land. And I exercise my rights based upon such as media and um, free speech. That's what I do. Because you all should. Because you're all free citizens. Kathy operates in the world of commerce. And her rules are different from our rules. Plain and simple. So that's just how it is. Attorneys and Gibson attorneys and Fender attorneys don't want you to know this, but it's the facts. Two different worlds, two different realms. So laws, laws, codes, policies, they're all different for you and me. But what Kathy chooses to do is up to her. And I'd like to see Kathy do things that aren't, well, as apt to cause trouble or stir the pot. And no, guys, I don't want you to think I'm sissying out or going Gen Z on you. I just want you to know that your orders would be much better off if they were done safely. And I'm sure there's a lot of ideas that you guys have about guitars that would be fantastic that Kathy would love to do. For instance, um, signature guitars that represent somehow your favorite artist, but don't infringe on copyright or copyright policies or pseudo laws. I'm going to call them pseudo laws because they don't, they don't apply to us. They apply to the world of commerce. So they apply to her. And there's a lot of stuff that people just don't understand. Percentages. Um, they don't understand the, the fact that when you affix a logo to a guitar, that becomes part of the guitar. Now the guitar has to be looked at as a whole with that on. So in the counterfeit world, in order to be a counterfeit, the term implies exact. Exact means just what it sounds like. Exact means, well, it means exact. And no chips in out there, no tribute guitar out there is exact to its real counterpart. It's not. So therefore, that nullifies the counterfeit aspect of it. Okay? Doesn't nullify the intent to the fraud, other half of the term that has to be meant to be a counterfeit. It doesn't nullify that. But you need both together to be a counterfeit. So you both have to be exact and have the intent to defraud something that their attorneys or any attorney will not tell you. It's their secret. If there is no intent to defraud, the counterfeit aspect is taken away. If the guitar is not exact, the counterfeit aspect is taken away. But here's the funny thing about the term counterfeit. And this is according to the United States Department of Justice under the Lanham Act. Any private citizen, be it you, me, Joe Blow from Kokomo, Grandma, the porn star that lives down the street, any of them, can own a counterfeit. Now, by definition, that means they can own a guitar legally and have an intention to defraud. But once they 
use that intent to defraud. Now they've committed a crime. But the crime is still not counterfeiting. It's just the intent to defraud. Because the guitar itself doesn't meet the other half of the criteria. Now we can go back and forth on this. And we can talk the legalities of it. And we can get into legal mumbo jumbo about it. But the fact of the matter is, most UCC attorneys know exactly what I'm talking about. Your run-of-the-mill attorney down the street that handles traffic court, uh, divorce, um, DWIs, anything like that. They don't know. They don't know. They're not trained. They don't know. They haven't dove into it. They don't know. But what they usually do know is that we operate in the world of commerce all the time when we go to court. We just don't know it. And we accept it. So I want you guys to know that there's no trouble you're going to get into. You can get a letter. I know it's of a channel right now that got a cease and desist letter from Gibson's attorneys. They fall under United States rules, regulations, and sometimes even policies. However, a cease and desist letter is nothing but a letter. If I write my, a letter to my grandmother and I tell her to stop baking cookies on Tuesdays, it's a cease and desist letter. If you don't stop making cookies on Tuesday, Grandma, I'm going to sue you because I don't think it's right. And that's exact. That is the the legal grounds that they have. They're asking you. Well, they're demanding. This is a demand. They demand it, but the demand isn't a legal demand. It's not asked by a judge. It's asked by an attorney. And they make demands. They make threats. Somehow they get away with it, and they make threats. But as a private citizen, they're not allowed to act. They, they could sue you if they want to. Yes, they can sue you. They're not going to win. Because you're a private citizen that does not stand under their authority. Because you stand under the authority of the United States Constitution. Not maritime law. Not uniform commercial code. Not laws of commerce. You stand on your legal grounds as a citizen of the United States. Other countries are different, so I'm not speaking to you what your laws are or your laws. I'm only talking about the laws here. Now, this can be all argued in court, of course. I'm not an attorney. I have spoke to an UCC attorney, <laughs> so I'm pretty sure he has a good grasp on what's going on. It's pretty comical, actually. I'd love to get him on the channel. But it's all common sense stuff. As Americans, we have the right to own and purchase whatever we want. It is not our responsibility to protect corporate interests of companies that rob you out of millions of dollars a year for inferior products and overcharge you. And somehow we still say, please, thank you, may I have another? And don't even get kissed first. It's a weird system we do over here in America. Now, am I against companies doing that? Well, I don't believe Americans should be ripped off for quality. Um, I don't think we should be handing our hard-earned money over um, based on brainwashing, thinking that they're the best. And the reason we think that these companies are the best are because we think we're the best. And we don't like things that are made outside of this country. I've totally changed my way of thinking. I love things that are made outside of the country. And there's many reasons. Why? It gives me the freedom of choice. I'm not locked into a corporation rule system. I am not, um, I'm not bound to buy anything from anywheres that I don't want to buy from. And I believe in paying my debts. I believe every human being, if they take out a debt, they should pay that debt. What, when you guys are thinking, Mike, what does that have to do with anything? Well, for years it has started that we're taught to hate certain countries, China being one of them. I don't hate China, I don't hate their people, nothing about it. And I'm going to go as far as to say this, regardless of what the media tells me, I don't hate their government. Why? Because I don't know enough about them to hate them. I know a bit about the people of China because, well, I've had to interact with them. But I don't know a lot about their government. You know, to a lot of people in China, they think that our government is pretty communistic. 
That's right. Here we are fighting about guitars and what logos are on them. But here's a country producing guitars with logos that they want on them. Are they more free than us in that aspect? Because we're not doing that here. But yet we get bent out of shape about it when we're presented choice. We're presented choice. And um, we get mad because somebody's presented that choice. Now whether you choose to make that choice is up to you. If your moral compass feels like you shouldn't, that's up to you. But to some people, these are just pieces of wood and electronics, and they represent something totally different. They're not trying to scam anybody. They just like the feeling that it gives them of having a guitar that represents their favorite artist. That's understandable, right? And if you want to get really, really technical, the um, ir irony is this. We'll use Gibson for an example because they seem to be the culprits when it comes to complaining about manufacturers making guitars with the logo on it. If I put a Gibson logo on my car and I drove around, am I infringing on copyright? Well, the answer is no, obviously, because I'm a private citizen. I'm allowed to do whatever I want. It's freedom of speech. So if I have Gibson on my guitar headstock, regardless of whether it came that way or not, am I responsible for that? Does it, does it, make, does it make me break any laws? No, it does not. Whether I put the sticker on myself, whether I painted it on myself, or somebody else did it. It's not on me. If a manufacturer does it, are they in trouble for it? Well, I guess that depends on who's doing it, right? Um, I guess that depends on who's doing it. Well, Mike, what are you talking about? Well, I'm going to give you some examples. For instance, we had Luthier that built the Slash guitar. And we go to this all the time. This is a great example of... Um, this is a fantastic example of the bias of the two-way monkey wrench. An American luthier builds almost, I remember I said it's hard to do exact, but almost exact replica of a Gibson Les Paul complete with the Gibson logo. Not just one, but multiple guitars. These guitars are sold to different individuals. One of these individuals happened to be Slash. He actually had two of these guitars. A lot of people don't know that. So this gentleman named Chris builds these guitars Slash loves it, makes the guitar famous on the Appetite for Destruction album. The guitar's name is Jessica. They had no permission, he had no permission from Gibson to build this guitar, but guess what this guy was? He was a luthier, a personal luthier, but he built a guitar and sold them. He engaged in the world of commerce. Did he break uniform commercial code? Hmm, well that's, that's a touchy subject, right? First, did he make a profit? Because if you're engaging in commerce, the whole thing about commerce is making profit. If you're selling for profit. Did he give the guitar away? Was it for profit? How much did he make? I don't know. We'd have to go back and look at the books, right? But the fact is, Gibson is totally fine with this. Why? Well, because he's dead now. And uh, they got to recreate the fake of the fake. That's right, let me say that again. Gibson got to recreate the fake of the fake. And they're doing it again, they just did it again. And it makes them millions of dollars. So without this fake, it's the irony, without this fake, they wouldn't have the cash cow that they have right now. Okay, so let's, let's put that in more perspective. If you're out and you're watching a gig, so Slash basically is on stage playing a fake Gibson. But yet everybody's seeing that Gibson logo making them want a Gibson. Did that hurt Gibson or did that help Gibson? This is before people knew it was a fake. Did that hurt Gibson or did that help Gibson? If I take a Chipson guitar out with a Gibson logo and I play it on stage, and it's done all the time, guys. Don't think it's not. And people see somebody on stage playing a guitar with a Gibson logo 
Does that hurt Gibson? Or does that help Gibson? Now this is a common sense question that nobody asks. Because obviously, obviously, without question, that helps Gibson because their name is being advertised. So, if, how do I put this? If Gibson's name's on the headstock and it's being presented to the world, it's free advertising for Gibson, regardless. And here's the best part. Nobody's mistaking up close a fake Gibson from a real Gibson. Nobody's mistaking the two that knows what they're doing. Now I realize there's a lot of fools out there that don't know, they wouldn't know a Corvette from a Ferrari. They're just not into that. And what I'm really realizing is you guys in the guitar world, not everybody, my viewers are pretty good, they're pretty smart. One thing about the Chipson, guys who like Chipsons, they're pretty smart when it comes to guitar and they can spot them right away. But why is it Gibson owners don't know shit? Not all of them. So if you know what you're talking about, you do, I'm not talking to all of you, but the ones who are baffled when they see a Chibson and say, what if it gets sold on Craigslist? Well, what if it does? What if I sell my bicycle and label it as a Cannondale and it's really just a Walmart special? What if I do that? Well, I committed fraud, didn't I? I was deceitful, wasn't I? And those people will always be deceitful. You're not gonna change the world. You're not gonna change that. If it's not guitars, it'll just be something else. These are just guitars, wood and electronics. And that's a pretty simple thing to understand for most people. When I talk to most people and I say, hey, what do you think about the great Chibson debate versus Gibson? And they're not musicians, they don't play guitars. You know what they say? That's the stupidest shit I've ever heard. You guys fight about that? It's a guitar. And they're right. Outside perspective. They're right. We shouldn't care either. Gibson shouldn't care if people are imitating or trying to emulate what they do. They should relish in it, welcome it, embrace the free, embrace the free advertising. Roll with it. It doesn't hurt them. It helps them. Always has helped them. I'll give you another example. James Hetfield, one of his most popular guitars, and you guys all know this, is the OGV Flying V, which was an electric. It was an electric guitar that was represented as a Gibson. Right. Gibson logo on the truss rod cover. James Hetfield rocked that guitar when he bought that guitar. He didn't know much about guitars, and he thought it was a Gibson. Until one day somebody told him, and he recorded it, remember, a lot of songs with that guitar. It was an electro, and it was represented as a Gibson. It was a fake Gibson for all intents and purposes because it was being represented as a Gibson. And then somebody told him, hey, it's got a bolt-on neck. Okay. It's the Gibson shape. And Gibson doesn't like it when you use their shapes. So when I'll... It's, it's a fake, right? But that's okay because it's James Hetfield. And to this day, it's his favorite guitar. It's been broken multiple times. The tailpiece has been broken. You name it. Went through multiple pickup changes. You name it. Still his favorite guitar. His exact words were, I'm going to be buried with this guitar. That speaks volumes. Well, one, that quality doesn't matter if it's a Gibson or not. Quality's quality no matter where it's made. You guys might, guys might not understand that as you're saying that Chipsons are plywood. They're not. But I've seen Epiphones that were plywood. So, it's all about your perspective. It's all about your perspective. Angus Young, one of my favorite guitar players of all time, actually played a guitar, an SG, it wasn't an SG. It was built by a luthier in the UK. And he played that for the Monsters Rock Tour. Had dual reel humbucker in it. Nice hot pickups. Had the lightning bolt inlays. And um, although it didn't say Gibson on the headstock, a lot of people didn't notice that. They assumed it was a Gibson, and that was the assumption, right? So it wasn't easily recognized as not a Gibson, which is a problem when it comes to uniform commercial code. 
Luthier had no permission to build this guitar and emulate a Gibson, but yet he did, and Angus used it quite proudly. At the time, it was one of his favorite guitars. So think about that. Lightning Bolt Inlays originated on that guitar. That's right, this Luthier is the designer of those Lightning Bolt Inlays that later turned up on the Gibson Signature guitar. Yet again, another example of being hypocritical. So Gibson didn't go after this Luthier. Well, how could they? Angus is playing his guitar. No, they embraced it and rolled with it. So now we're finding that Gibson is embracing Epiphone more than ever, right? They still hate Chipsons. They can't get it out of their DNA. And the, Ch the Gibson lovers can't get it out of their DNA to maybe not hate Chipsons, but respect that they may be actually getting some free advertising. And hell, if I wasn't showing you guys Chipsons and other people weren't showing you guys Chipsons and how good they've gotten, would you know the difference? Maybe we're doing a service by showing you guys what they are and what to look for. Even though the fact of the matter is, there's a lot of differences. 85, 95, 98% differences. And they're always pointed out quite frequently in the videos. That's different, that's different, that's different. Yes, you're right. That's the point. They're made different on purpose. All right, guys, thanks for watching Fulton Street Beats. Thanks for taking this little walk with me in circles and listening to me vent uh, about Chibsons. I know a lot of you are still going to get angry and say it's intellectual property and how would you like it? And, well, you guys are still aren't thinking clearly. It's free advertising. And what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Gibson cannot pick and choose who they let make copies and who doesn't especially when they didn't pick and choose they it just happened it's that simple they've set a precedence of allowing it number one nobody's brought this up in court they have set a precedence of allowing it accepting it and engaging in the world of commerce and making money off of it all right food for thought guys hit that like button share subscribe